All right. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Um, today, uh, this morning, sorry, is the uh, CI Tools launch webinar for Archicad 24. Uh, I'm Josh Osborne, and I'm the product manager here at Central Innovation in Auckland for the CI Tools. Um, and today we're going to be looking at a couple of new things in the tools in Archicad 24. As you might know, the CI tools are some of the most popular Archicad add-ons in the world. Um, and these are the tools that you might um, have known of previously as the CAD image tools. We recently changed the name to the CI tools, but the tools themselves um, and the people who make the tools um, are the same as we have been for quite some time now. We've been, we've been around for quite a while, actually. The CI tools have existed for over 15 years, um, and a lot of us here who work on those still um, have been around for that long too. Um, and one of the things that you also might know is that we also aim to get the CI or CAD image tools uh, for each new Archicad version released on the same day that the Archicad version is. Um, and we've done that for most of the Archicad releases that have happened while we've been around. Um, and the most recently we did that was week before last with Archicad 24 that was released. Uh, the CI tools for that were released on the same day as that was released internationally. Um, and if you are from Australia or New Zealand, uh, the CI, the Archicad 24 was released yesterday, um, and so the tools were already ready for you to use that um, by the time that came out. <clears throat> you can get the CI tools from MyCI, which is hopefully a website that you're familiar with. Uh, the address for that is MyCI centralinnovation.com so you can head over to there and log in and you want to go to the CI tools section on my CI and then go to the get tools part and you'll be able to download the installer for Windows or for Mac OS there so that you can go ahead and install the CI tools it supports uh, all Archicad versions from 18 up to 24 um, so you can just install that and it will find out what versions of Archicad you have installed and it will let you install the tools for those. If you don't already have a MyCI account, you can head to myci.centralinnovation.com slash free trial and set yourself up with an account there and that will let you install and use any of the tools for 30 days. Um, and those are fully functional inside of those 30 days as well. Um, you won't won't lose out on anything that you would normally get and then once the 30 days runs out if you choose not to go ahead and subscribe to the tools anything that you have done with them will stay as it was you're not going to lose anything when the trial expires um, so everything that you've drawn up will continue to be shown in your floor plans um, and stuff and on your on your layouts and all that sort of thing you just won't be able to edit them anymore then if you do want to go through and buy them you can head to myci.centralinnovation.com slash buy, um, and that's where you can make the purchase. There's three options to buy the tools for. You can choose a basic subscription that lets you choose two tools. You can choose a pro subscription, which, com which comes with a set of seven tools, or you can get the premium tools, which comes with all of the tools that are currently available, um, plus some extra goodies as well. So that's myci.centralinnovation.com slash buy. So today we're going to be looking at the tools in Archicad 24. We actually have a bunch of new tools, so those are what we're going to be looking at first. Um, and then after that, we'll look at the new features in a couple of our, our other tools and also in the Essential Library. Um, if you have any questions during this webinar, just enter those in the questions panel in the go to webinar control thing. And when I've finished the main presentation, I'll look through those questions and uh, answer as many of those as I can uh, live and then anything else I'll follow up with you afterwards. We'll also be recording the webinar and that will be available on my CI to view in about a week or so. So if you want to refer back to that or if you want to show it to anybody who wasn't able to attend one of these live, uh, it'll be available there eventually as well. All right, so the first new tool that I want to show you is called the CI Transformer tool. Um, now, one of the things that you may have run across in Archicad is that if you ever want to uh, mirror your entire model, at the moment the only way to do that is to go into 3D and select everything um, and apply your transform, or in this case your mirror, 
to the model and then go back out into your 2D views and move all of the associated data to the right places, make sure your views are all updated and your layouts and go through and just deal with all of that aftermath of doing the transform. Um, and so what this tool aims to do is reduce that entire process to just two clicks instead. So I've got a model open here. You can see um, it's a little batch. There's the floor plan view. Um, we've got a section and you can see on the section I've got some labels um, and other elements like that. Got a north elevation uh, to look at and you can see the 3D view of it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop back to the floor plan and I'll just head to my CI tools menu. That's where you'll get to pretty much all of the tools um, that we'll be looking at today. Head to CI tools transformer and choose the mirror project option. You don't have to have anything selected for this because it's just going to mirror the entire currently open project. So select that. And once you do that, you'll get a pencil icon. Then you just click the pencil on where you want to mirror about and then choose whether you want to mirror horizontally or vertically. So in the horizontal plane or in the vertical plane. Do your second click and ARCHICAD will think for a few minutes, no, sorry, not for a few minutes, for a few seconds uh, while it does the mirror. And then you'll see it has mirrored my project and all of that 2D data that was on there has also been mirrored. So you can see the uh, label, 2D labels that I had. Some were pointing to elements and some were just floating in midair. Those have all mirrored correctly. If I go to my section view, you'll see that that section has mirrored now and all of the 2D elements have still stayed as they should have. And the same will happen in the elevation view that I had and my 3D view. And if you go to any layouts now, those will all be updated as well. So essentially it just removes all of that extra work that you would have to do if you do happen to want to mirror your entire project. Um, so that is the CI transformer tool. And again, if you want to try that out, you can do that anytime just by using the CI tools installer, which you can get from my CI. Right, the next tool that I want to look at uh, is called the CI Annotate tool. Um, and what this does is something that you might do in word processing apps and that sort of thing is um, you'll want to select a large amount of text and change the case on it on the fly. Um, so make everything capitals or if you accidentally typed everything in caps lock, turn it back into normal non-shouting text or something like that. And what this tool aims to do is, is to reproduce that sort of thing inside ARCHICAD. So I'm going to jump into my project again and I'll go to a view that has some text on it. So you can see here, most of the text is written uh, in sort of normal sentence case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the CI tools menu and go to annotate and choose the convert case option there. And when I do that, you can see I've got a couple of options for things I can do at the moment. It's set to sentence case but I can also choose to turn everything into uppercase, to lowercase, or into title case. So for now, I'm just gonna change everything to uppercase. And I'll hit okay, and you see immediately, it just goes through and just, just does it to all of your text boxes there. So it's just a really nice, quick way of doing that thing. Um, there's a couple of options to how you, how you get it to do it as well. You can see there's some things that have converted here that I don't necessarily want it to. So I'm going to go back into the case settings here and I'll choose title case this time, which is going to capitalize every word. And I don't want that to apply to everything though. So I'm going to add some exceptions. So what you can do is hit the edit button here and it'll let you add some exceptions for things that you don't want it to apply to. So I'm going to go through and I'll say that I want centers to be ignored to stay in lowercase. Um, I want I want the I want the word on to be ignored because that's going to look weird with capitals on my title case. Um, I'm going to put in an X so that all of my dimensions that you can see show a lowercase X because I don't want those capitalized. And I'm also going to make the word jib uh, capitalized as well because uh, that's how that should be. So I'll hit OK with those exceptions. 
I've got total case set and I'm telling it to observe those exceptions and now I'm going to hit OK and you can see it goes through and it does what I asked it to but it has followed the rules that I gave it to as well. So you can see my ons are not capitalized but all the other words are. My x's are lowercase, jib is in uppercase and centers is all in lowercase as well. So it just lets you set rules for um, things that you might need um, like those cases that I've just shown and probably plenty of other cases as well and easily convert the case in your drawings. So it's the CI annotate tool. Right, the next new one is called CI shortcut. Um, now what this one is for is quite often when you are flying around in your model in 3D to sort of check it to make sure it looks looks right and makes sense um, that things join up and that sort of thing. Often you'll find parts of the model that you want to fix or just look at further to try and figure out what's going on. Um, and if you've done that a lot, you may know that it's kind of a hassle to um, find the elements in floor plan or section or something that you've found in 3D. And so this tool is just a really quick shortcut um, to that process. So I'll go back to this model and I'll just look at it in 3D. And imagine that we're, we're zooming around here uh, looking for any mistakes that we've made um, or any problems with the model. And in this case, we find that one of these beams here is not long enough. It, d it doesn't reach all the way to the wall. Um, obviously, you could modify it in 3D, but we want to check that it um, makes sense in floor plan and that sort of thing. So what we'll do is we'll select the element that we're interested in here and then just go to the CI tools menu and then shortcut and hit reveal and plan. And that'll just immediately take us to the floor plan view that has that element in it and zoom right up to it and select it. So it just gets rid of you having to hunt things down or use find and select to find things or search by ID or anything like that. And it also applies in section views and elevations as well. So you could open up one of your sections and say you want to look a bit more into this window. Instead of having to select the window and find out its ID and then search for the ID and floor plan, again, you can just go CI Tools, Shortcut, Reveal and Plan, and it takes us straight to that window in the floor plan view. So just remove some of that messing around and speeds up the whole process of checking your model over. So that one's the CI Shortcut tool. And the last of the four new tools that we're going to look at is called CI Metadata. Now, hopefully, a lot of you now. Um, and Archicad are dealing with metadata fairly frequently. Um, the properties and classifications in Archicad um, have a lot of metadata in them and making sure that's managed properly is fairly important, um, especially if you export into IFC or that sort of thing. But even if you're just staying in Archicad, having good metadata is always nice. Um, and one of the things about managing metadata at the moment is that it can be a little bit time consuming. You have to select elements and go into settings dialogues to find things and comparing between different elements to see what their properties are is a little bit uh, difficult at the moment. And so the metadata tool is to help people manage all of that metadata. So just back in this project again, the metadata tool takes the form of a palette. So I'm going to go to the CI tools menu again and head to metadata and then just choose to show the metadata palette. Just move that over here a bit. So you can see it's divided into two sections at the moment. There's a property section at the top and classifications down at the bottom. And the way that this tool works is you simply select elements in your ARCHICAD project and it will immediately show you all of the metadata associated with them in this little window here. So instead of normally you'd have to select this and uh, either scroll through the, uh, the info box click on this and then find the bit that you want or jump through into the actual uh, settings info here and find it in there. Just removes that extra stuff and just shows it right here and it will change on the fly, of course, as you go and select other things. So you can very quickly and easily move through your model and check on the metadata for all your elements. And all of these fields here are editable as well. Uh, so you can not only check on everything in here, but also make changes as well. So if you select, say, your wall um, and change change one of the settings, it immediately makes that change um, and you can just keep moving. Um, you can see this one's now not the default anymore, so it's it's 
preserved that change, uh, but the other ones are still at the default. So it makes it really quick and easy to go through and work with your properties. And it also makes it easy um, to, to match up properties as well. So if you've got walls with different properties, for instance, you can click on one easily, see what it is, and then click back, that sort of thing. The second part of this is the classification palette here. Sorry, the classification section of the palette, which you can see is showing the classification of the element I have selected. And one of the things that this is very useful for is that you can use it as a kind of a, a find and select tool to work uh, with in your, in your model. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to go and I'm going to select a bunch of elements. And this could be... Um, if you're working on sections of buildings and that sort of thing, and you want to uh, find certain parts of certain subsets of the model, um, you can see when I've selected my whole whole model chunk there, I have a list of all the classifications in the things I have selected. So you can see uh, there's quite a few of them there because I have a few things selected. So what I can do here is I can say, well, I've got a selection but I only want to choose the, let's say the beams in that selection. So click on the ARCAD classification beam here and just hit the little filter icon and instantly it deselects everything except for the things that meet the requirements of the classification you had selected. So it's a really quick way of just filtering through those selections or the whole model um, to get to what you want. And it works the other way as well. So you could also, go through here and say select a window. See ARCHICAD classification is window here. Select that classification and hit the selection button here and it does the opposite way around. It selects all of the windows in the model uh, based on the one selection that you have. So you can work both ways and uh, I know a lot of people do work pretty heavily with those classifications um, and properties now so it can be a very powerful way of uh, navigating through your model as well as the fact that similarly to with properties you can also edit the classifications um, to add or remove them from here as well if you just hit, hit the plus button it'll bring up all the classifications available in the model and you can add those in as well so you can edit those and use um, selections to navigate through uh, your selections as well so that's the ci metadata tool now while we're in 3d here I'm just going to show you uh, something new that we added in our coverings tool, which uh, I'm sure some of you are probably familiar with. This is a wall covering in this case. You can see I've got some weatherboards here. And I'm just going to select this, uh, this part of the covering here, and I'll jump into the settings. And what we've done is we've added a new type of shiplap panel here, which lets you set up a sequence. So I'll set it to shiplap. Uh, as normal and single value will make it work the same way shiplap always have but uh, you can change this to a repeating sequence and once you do that you'll see the d value has a button now and if you hit set there it lets you set out the way that you want the pattern uh, to work so at the moment there are only uh, 20 mils difference between all of them so i'll just exaggerate that a bit so that you can see it easily so i'm going to say that the pattern length is four and i'm just going to modify these so that they are big enough to see. So let's go 195 um, and 295. So I make that selection and hit OK. And you can see now I have a repeating pattern of boards going up the wall. You can also set the pattern to be a random sequence as well. And that will do essentially the same thing as we had with the repeating pattern, only it's going to randomize where the boards are as well. Um, those are both things that we had quite a few requests from customers for, so that's in the tool uh, now, so you can go ahead and use that right away. Um, but very handy if that's the sort of thing that you wanted to get on your walls. Right. The next thing I want to look at is the CI cabinets tool which um, hopefully uh, a lot of you are using this one already. Um, and so you may already know, but in ARCAD 23, we actually rebuilt the entire tool from scratch. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly go through how that works so that you can see it in action and give it a go yourself. 
Um, all of the changes that we made in 23 are here in 24 still as well. Um, so we'll quickly look at that. Um, so at the moment you can see I've got some cabinets set up here. I'll select this one here and you can see I've got a full set of four cabinets um, selected as just one object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and actually turn this into a, a set of actually different cabinets. Um, so you can see it's divided into four at the moment and they're all uh, opening doors with uh, looks like a recessed handle on them. Um, so I'm just going to jump into the settings and see how we can work with that. So we've got some standard settings about the size and that sort of thing. But what we want to look at at the moment is the modules, which is what we call the individual parts of the cabinet. So I'll select modules and you can see it's showing a representation of how the parts of the cabinet are set out. So there's four at the moment and we've got one selected here. Um, and there's plenty of settings for how we want that module to work at the moment. So at the moment, I've got this leftmost one selected. I'm going to choose that and I'll choose to make it a door right. And when I do that, you can see immediately the preview changes there. So I've got that one set to a door right. And now I can go through and uh, select the middle ones. And I can set those to be, let's make those draw stacks. And again, it makes those changes right away and hit OK, and now we've got a nicely set out set of cabinets just within the one object, so it's nice and easy to manipulate still. And there's plenty of control over all of those settings I had there as well. So if I go back into the modules view, you can see that under the types, there's actually quite a few different options for things you can choose. Um, so you could select one of them and change it to be, say, an oven. Um, and once you have worked with the modules, you can also change the presets that you have for those. So in this instance, we've got an oven uh, selected. But if I were to choose the draw stack, you can see that it's defaulting to show five drawers um, and they're all set to 120 each. Um, we can change the number here to add more and we can change the sizes there. So let's just change that to a four and see. It removes that extra panel. And then if I jump back into this view, you should be able to see that it's it's updated, updated right away to have just four now. Um, and so that, that's the way that all of these modules work. So you could set up four different presets for draw stack with four, draw stack with three, and draw stack with five. And those could be applied to different parts or different modules in this one placed cabinet element. We've also got controls for how you want the fronts to appear. So at the moment, they're just showing flat panels, um, but there are options to do uh, glazed panels um, and shaker panels as default here, but you can modify those to be pretty much whatever you want. So um, at the moment, the shape is frameless, but we could add a frame to it if we wanted to. Um, we can add a little uh, wavy wibbly bit on the top and the same on the bottom. And then you can also set what is actually inset into it as well. Um, so at the moment we've just got white paint uh, rails and panel and if we had glass it would be set to clear um, but we can change any of those there and obviously you can change the settings for how in this case the wavy top is set out on that front. And now that I've modified that front you'll see <clears throat> that all of my modules now have a wavy top panel. We've also got controls for handles as well, um, which you might have seen over here. So at the moment everything is set to recessed, um, but in the case of the drawers I want to set those to something different. So I'm going to go in here and I'll just choose the depots for that. Um, so that's applied those to the shelves already, but you can look in the settings again here and see what else we have available. Obviously recessed is uh, selected at the moment and you can see we have settings for all of the things that you might want to control on a recessed handle. Um, and there's plenty of other options as well. So we've got barbo, depot, uh, various kinds of knobs um, and that sort of thing. And also if you wanted to, you can make your own custom handle. Um, so you can make something up with GDL, save it as a custom handle and then select that here and it will let you apply anything. Um, and that also applies to the fronts as well. You can apply a custom front panel. Um, if that's what you want to do. 
So that's the CI cabinets tool. The last thing I want to look at <coughs> is some new additions to the essential library, which we are now calling the select library. Um, so New Zealand select customers and Australian select customers. That's uh, the library that you get included um, with a bunch of objects and stuff with Archicad. Um, so the first object I want to look at is a, a MyTech um, BOMAC post bracket that we've made. And it has a nice 3D representation and lots of controls for the different types of post brackets that you might uh, want to use it for. Um, it supports the whole catalog of post brackets in this object. We've got a drain trap object, which was just recently added um, based on a customer request. And this is just a nice 3D drain trap object, um, which will work well with your cabinets if you're using those. Um, and you can see that there's plenty of control for any of the things that you might want to do with it. So at the moment, um, it's set to a P-trap, but you can choose various different kinds. You can choose whether you want a waste disposal unit on it or not. And you can control all of the uh, pins and materials of that. Got a bathroom sign object, which is uh, just a nice straightforward 3D bathroom sign um, to save you the time of making something like that yourself. And it also just looks looks nice. It's been uh, well made, I think. Of course, I would say that. Um, and you can do things like add uh, text to it and control the materials, sorry, the surfaces um, that are applied to it and that sort of thing. There's plenty of control for the font and the way that you want the frame to show and all that sort of thing. Um, and it's just a really nice straightforward object. Uh, and the last of these new ones here is a scissor truss, which um, goes with the other collection of other trusses that we have in the select library already. Um, it has similar controls to how what all of those do. So you can see, you can set the um, various angles and lengths and that sort of thing to what you might want to use for a scissor truss. So those four new, four new objects are in the CI select library. All right. One of the other things that we've been working on, um, and we're still working on this, but is uh, support for dark mode, which, as you might know, one of the new features for ARCHICAD 24 is that it supports dark mode on Macs. Um, Graphisoft is still working through making all their objects compatible. Um, they, all, they all work fine at the moment, but um, some of the interfaces can look a little bit strange, um, and we're doing the same ourselves. We're working over those to make them work, uh, but we've got a couple that look pretty nice already. There's one of them there. So yes, New Zealand and Australian customers, you can get that essential library, sorry, the select library right away from MyCI and anybody can download the tools from MyCI. So again, it's just myci.centralinnovation.com. Uh, if you have any questions now, uh, enter those in the panel and I'll get to those in about a minute. Um, so just want to go over this again. So if you wanted to sign up for a trial, uh, you can head to myci.centralinnovation.com slash free trial and get a 30-day trial of any of the tools. And if you do want to buy them, there's those three options under myci.centralinnovation.com slash buy.